Bagels Nation, we are at Shelling Point, which is a part of East Denver, and I got this other microphone. So we're gonna go around and talk to all the people who are at this amazing conference. You know the deal, I've been talking about East Denver ever since Bankless started. Uh, it's a really important conference. It is the biggest of the ETH city conferences that are out there. Last year at, in February of uh, 20, which, what was it, 2022, East Denver attracted something like 13,000, 15,000 people. And we were totally oversubscribed for the sports castle. So we are in a brand new venue. And even though we're in a bear market and all of our token prices are down bad, uh, the energy and excitement at East Denver is up only. Uh, East Denver has always been up only. I think I haven't gotten any official quote but we are somewhere between 15 and 20,000 people here in Denver, Colorado for what is what has become much more than just East Denver. Uh, East Denver has always been a two to three day conference, but this has been an entire week. And East Denver has got so big that so many one day off events have happened. Uh, so really the week started on Monday and today is Thursday and it is the start of the canonical East Denver conference. But really it's been going on all week. We were at the uh, Axelar Interoperability Conference on Tuesday. We were at WalletCon yesterday, but now East Denver has officially started here in the Denver Convention Center. So like I said, I got the second microphone. Let's go see who we can talk to. What's up, Hudson? Hello. How How's it are you going? Doing? Good. Uh, we are at. Who Shark. are you? I am David Hoffman. Who are you? Uh, I am Hudson Jameson. What are you up to today, Hudson? Well, um, I'm speaking later at Shelling Point, and uh, I'm also just kind of meeting people, giving a lot of hugs. Uh, and so, this is your. How many Shelling Points have you gone to these days? Oh, all of them? All of them. Uh, and this is the, uh, the first one that's at this New East Denver. Yes. New East Denver. How is this New East Denver for you? It's been really good. This one is like so big, it's like almost overwhelming because I've yeah. been to all the other ones except last year. Mm -hmm. So like it's much smaller the previous years. But no, no, it's still really good feelings around here. So yeah. Uh, what's your talking to me about? My talk is about burnout. It's me with a few other people who have burned out and uh, what we did about it. I took a year off. Yeah. I'm coming back. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, everyone who's been in crypto long enough kind of knows the gist. For people who are sadly going to miss your talk, do you want to give them a, a quick TLDR? Sure. So our talk is about burnout, basically how to tell the signs, how to kind of find support, convince yourself to like take breaks, have a healthy lifestyle, and uh, maybe even talk about what workplaces should do to support that. I think it's pretty ironic that we just started recording and the first person to talk to is talking about burnout. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll save this one for the end. How do you feel about that's, that one? Maybe, maybe that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so what are you looking forward to? Any other talks that you're going to attend or anyway, yeah, any speakers? Gabe what about? Shapiro, I think, yeah? has a talk now. And they might be now. I have to go check. But like, uh, yeah, he's a wild card. I want to see that. Yeah. And then there's also um, some other stuff on DeFi mm -hmm. uh, from some people I really respect from like Euler and uh, other things. And so you've been to, I think, every single East Denver. and I really counted the number of conferences I've been to. So I've been to every East Denver uh, except for last year, and I've been to over 32 Ethereum conferences. Uh, that's quite a large number. I've been to a large number of Ethereum conferences, yeah. and I am nowhere near 32. <laughs> uh, maybe yeah. it makes sense that your talk is about burnout. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, no, it was... It was rough. I, it, it, the, the coolest thing, though, was DevCon 6 was in Bogota. I was walking around, five floors, 4,000 people there, and suddenly I was like, oh, this isn't DevCon 1 with 300 people. I don't have to, like, go 100 miles per hour anymore. And it really helped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely one thing I've noticed at all of these uh, one-day-off events, which is really new for ETH Denver, is all of these, like, solo days. Yeah, uh, yeah, So yeah. many people I don't recognize. Yeah, absolutely. And there's, a, like, a lot of, um, like, young young devs that are yeah. just getting into this. And I'm trying to find more, you know, access to them to get with the OGs and, like, mm -hmm. you know, make sure that they're getting the right values about being here. Yeah, certainly. Uh, for, for people that weren't able to make it to ETH Denver, what's the vibe? Can you g g give them a, a presence? Yeah. How, so how there is like the here? largest collection of different like companies that are blockchain focused, but also like adjacent and like uh, anything from, you know, gaming to DeFi, DeSci, just everything you can think of. The gaming one surprised me a lot because it looks really professional. <laughs> so I'm going to I've been walking around and I just found you and handed you the microphone and started talking. Yeah. Who should be my next target? Ooh, ooh, ooh. I thought I saw Victor Boonin over there. I did see Victor Boonin. If I saw Victor Boonin right now, I'd be absolutely going after him. <laughs> I think I see him right over there, actually. So I'm going to go take this microphone and run. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cheers. Bam, we're going to go get Victor Boonin. We found Victor. We're going to go get him. Hi, Victor. Can I borrow you? Yeah, absolutely. This is my good friend, Victor. How's it going, Victor? Hi, good, good, how are you? Good, this is uh, your what number of East Denver have you been to? 
2019, 20, 21, 22, 23, five. How five. is this one different? Uh, let me name all the ways. Well, one, I'm not organizing, so that's very nice. I get to walk around and enjoy. Um, I think everything's, the venue's new, obviously, mm -hmm. so it fits a ton more people. Uh, the bathrooms all work yes. so far. Very nice. So far, big big right? blow up. Yeah. Um, I think one of the things that I love is that like you have room to breathe and walk mm -hmm. around and like, talk to people. The thing that I don't love is that I'm not used to the layout of it yet. Yeah, like, right. I don't know where all the stages are, so I'm just kind of like meandering. But I feel like Saturday and Sunday will get a lot better. Yeah. Are you giving a talk or what's going on with you? No, I am here. Uh, I'm on paternity leave. Yeah. I'm on daddy duty. And yeah, so I'm you're just. You're super cute. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, so I'm just, I'm just hanging out. It's yeah. kind of like, I haven't committed to any events, mm -hmm. I haven't committed to any panels. Mm -hmm. Just chilling. Is there any uh, subject matter that you think is really standing out here at East Denver? Uh, here at East Denver, I haven't gone to any of the talks. I oh, should have. Naughty, naughty, naughty man. Yeah, naughty I should have. I haven't. <laughs> Uh, but I think there's anything that I, that I would love for people to talk about. It's like, one, I'd love for people to talk about liquid staking and yeah. kind of like how it's supposed it's a to evolve. Big conversation. And, and I think that's part of that is just talking about the regulatory climate, but also how do you make intelligent choices as a project in order to set yourself up for success when it comes to dealing with regulators. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, what do you name things, right? And so like recently people stopped using LSD and now yeah. everybody's using LST, right? right? That's an essential choice and like sets projects up for, for success. Why is that so important? Why is that UST versus USD choice so important? So LSD, uh, the D stands Excuse for- me, LSD. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, uh, the D stands for derivative. Right. And derivative has a very specific connotation right. in the security yeah. space around right. exactly what it is. And so it's actually not descriptive of what's happening. And so you're taking two risks. Like one, you're not describing the thing as it actually is. And two, you're like calling it a derivative when it's clearly not. And it's, you know, derivatives fall under regulatory framework that clearly do not apply here. Mm -hmm. And so switching over to LST is more descriptive, like we're saying token, is more descriptive to what you actually have and what's happening. Mm -hmm. And it makes it clear that this is not a derivative and that shouldn't fall under that regulatory framework. Yeah. Right. Okay. So people should start instead of using the words LSD, which sadly is like really fun. It's a fun. It's a fun one. It's very it's a fun. fun. One. Yeah. And you have slogans like "Use LSD, not LSD." You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. Uh. Okay. But you're, we're saying use LST because it doesn't trigger the ire of regulators, and we can perhaps yeah. push them at bay, keep them at bay a little bit more. Yeah. 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 And, I, and I think that like people have a little bit of a naive view sometimes uh -huh. where they don't realize that words matter. Right. But if you actually look at like the reason a lot of projects get into trouble, it's like. How do you market things? How right. do you like talk to the community? How do you like position stuff? And right. it's just like a lot of it is just your your strategy on comms. Yeah. So the Shanghai upgrade coming mm -hmm. pretty soon, uh, and I know you're 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 working with Coinbase Cloud, mm -hmm. Coinbase Staking. Mm -hmm. So this is very very relevant to you. Yeah. How is Coinbase thinking about Shanghai? What does it need to do? What are you guys planning for? Is there what's the conversation like? Yeah. I mean, you know, a big part of it is just making sure that we're ready from the technical perspective. Uh, and so you know, withdrawal is going live. We have an ETH staking API, which is how our partners integrate with our staking product on Ethereum. And so just making sure that we have the records upgrades there, that all the withdrawal keys are set correctly, everything's good to go. Other than that, I think it's gonna be kind of a non-event, to yeah. be perfectly honest. I think there's a lot of like midwit takes on Twitter of like, there's all this ETH self on pressure. staking, yeah, self pressure. I'm like, you guys are dummies and <laughs> I'm not gonna respond to anything because I, I don't have time for it. Uh -huh. um, but I'm excited. I think it's just the latest step in a, in a you know ETH roadmap. And to me, this feels like the culmination of the efforts from um, so many different teams and, and core devs and contributors. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of like the merge was done, this is the last step, and then you're like, okay, it's yeah. done. Yeah. Everything's done. And now yeah. it's like, let's look to the future. I know this wasn't your project, but BASE is you know capturing the mindshare by storm. Mm -hmm. And I know CBE, the, the liquid staking token from mm -hmm. Coinbase, yeah. is another decentralized uh, you know crypto project offered by Coinbase. How are these things gonna get married? How are they, what's the overlap between these two things? Um, well, I, I think the first thing is that, um, you know, there are parts of the Coinbase ec ecosystems that are centralized and like you're part of the Coinbase stack, right? Uh -huh. So like if you're using USDC, if you're using CBE, if you're using okay. Base, these are like centralized things that are run by Coinbase and, and, you know, Coinbase is responsible for, you know, making sure that they're integrated into DeFi and have like all that stuff. And so you can have that like first party ecosystem, but on the other hand, you can also have like the more decentralized aspects. and so. You know, for CBE, there's also LSE, right, which is part of Alluvial and the Liquid Collective. That's going to be launching soon TM. And then on the base side as well, like, you know, it's on the road towards progressive decentralization. And so you have a choice about do I want to use it now when it, it is its, its centralized self, or do I want to wait until it becomes more decentralized? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Victor, uh, who should be my next victim that I should put a microphone in front of? Uh, I see Kevin Owaki walking very fast away from me, which makes me very sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you, you can chase him down. Uh, do you want to do Lisa? She gets flustered easy, so yes. maybe she's a perfect target. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, Where so is she? No trust, she was right there. I'm just going to give her the mic and be yeah. like, Lisa, yeah. you're on camera. Yeah, let's, let's do it. All let's right. do it. Hey, Lisa. Hey, you're on camera now. With Hi, Lisa. Hello. How's it going? Good to see you. Uh, tell me a little bit about who you are. Hi, I'm Lisa. I am <laughs> Victor's better half. <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, the mom to Alexander Boonin. No, mm -hmm. um, I'm also the CEO at Aztec, which actually this is our booth right here and my team. Um, and Aztec is building an encrypted Ethereum. Yeah, right. Okay, so that is a very hot topic these days. Yes. Uh, with all of this like regulatory pressure about other things uh, that aren't adjacent to privacy, but I'm sure you guys are like have to have been thinking about this. Uh -huh. How is that climate impacting what you guys are doing at Aztec? So we're actually really excited about the interest in ZK that mm -hmm. developers have right now. There's a lot of people that are building ZK applications and Aztec built a, a product called Noir, which is mm -hmm. a universal ZK language right. that people can use to like build all kinds of um, applications where they can do things like you know, compliance checks, for example, which can feed into things like, okay, how are we responding to like, you know, regulatory um, requests or like enforcement across all different jurisdictions. So I think the point is that it's going to be very flexible and up to the developer to kind of like adhere to the jurisdictions that they're operating in. Okay, so uh, give us a description of a world where NOR is like maximally adopted, all the developers know how to build on it. What does that look like for Ethereum? Yeah, okay. So Today, Noir can actually be used across different proving systems and around different ecosystems. So Aztec is going to be one of them. Mm -hmm. um, but Noir can also be used across like Starkware and across Polygon and all the other kind of Ethereum ecosystems. So it's like a development kit? Um, it's a language. A language. So it's basically like providing the syntax for people to build like uh, ZK proofs really mm -hmm. easily. And the goal is to get Web2 developers building with these ZK proofs mm -hmm. and ultimately deploying across all these different uh, Ethereum ecosystems, whether it's Starkware or Aztec or mm -hmm. Polygon or any of the other ZK ecosystems that actually have the integrations with Noir. Does it? Do we need it, it to be a ZK rollup for that to work, or how, no. how, what, what are the limitations on who can build using Noir? Um, I think in terms of the limitations, it's like there's technical limitations today, so we're building things like recursion to make it faster. Right. Um, but I think the limitation is really like is that integration built with Noir and that proving system? Okay. And so we actually have a grants program with Aztec right now where people uh -huh. are building out those integrations. Cool. So people that are in like the Starkware community that want to use Noir are like building the integration so it can be compatible with Starkware. Okay. So if we if there's a bar, is it zero to one hundred? Mm -hmm. And zero is there's zero privacy on Ethereum. One hundred is everything on Ethereum is private. Yeah. Where are we? And where will we find equilibrium? So today we're probably at like, I don't know, less than 10. Okay. Um, we have a product live. It's called Aztec Connect. And it allows people to interact with layer one DeFi using Aztec. So users deposit their funds into Aztec. And then they can interact with protocols like Lido, Compound, Aave, Element, etc. And what they benefit from is gas savings because they're participating in our roll-up. But also privacy because all, all users see on mainnet is that you're interacting with Aztec is interacting with the protocol, but you don't see the individuals that are interacting with it. So that's kind of where we are today. The future state is being able to build any part private smart contracts. So you can have private variables, private functions, private state. And so that's like the hundred. And like the idea would be basically enabling this new use case or lots of new use cases that require privacy. And do you think we'll ever get to 100 or you find we'll find equilibrium before that point? Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's probably always going to be like examples of things that should be completely public, but we're just seeing so much interest in people that are doing things in a public way right now that want to have privacy. Sure. So an example of that is NounsDAO has a request out there right now with um, ZK projects to build private voting for their DAO Ooh, so cool. that they can allow right. their, their participants to like vote privately without being concerned about like their identity being revealed or being persuaded because of their identity. And so, Which like, is like the really way democracy works, right? right? You go right, into right. a voting booth and no one is like, oh, what's your, what's your vote known over there? Right. That's like how it should work. Right, 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 exactly. So like, I think there's a lot of things that people are doing publicly today that ideally they would do privately. Right, and right. that's a good example of one. Sure. Uh, what, okay, what's going to be first? Is that an example of things that uh, governance is going to go private first? Or what other like utilities do you think are going to go private? Uh, identity, identity is a big one. Yeah, like yeah, people certainly. being able to like share 
aspects of their identity or information with a ZK proof rather than sharing the underlying information. Like mm -hmm. super excited about that. We have a team building with Noir right now mm -hmm. um, in order to do that for pseudonymous contributors. Nice. Um, we also are seeing people that are, you have to kind of like rethink a little bit how DeFi applications are built with privacy because obviously right. like the way that Uniswap is built today probably doesn't work as well with privacy. And right. so I think future DeFi protocols that have privacy are gonna have like, you know, private order books right. and stuff like that. So I think there's gonna be like new mental models and new um, kind of ways that developers will build, be building with privacy. So if we just piqued the interest of bankless listeners and they want to go down this rabbit hole, how should they find the top of the rabbit hole? Aztec.network or mm -hmm. go to Twitter and follow us at Aztec Network. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Lisa, uh, who should be my next victim? Because Victor told you and then here you are. <laughs> who should be next? Let's see. Who's around? Whether you can or cannot see them. Oh, Victor's got an idea. <laughs> okay. Oh, we're going to go follow, we're gonna go follow okay, Victor. Cool. We're going to go follow Victor. Bye, Lisa. Thank you. Hey, I'm kind of hungry for a green pill. Let's go see if we can find one. Hey, do you have a green pill? Oh, yes, I have. I have oh. a green pill Tic Tac. Oh, I'll, I'll take one. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Oh, I'm going to get green pill. Oh, there's Simona. Hi, Simona. Hey, I'm chewing on a hey. green pill, which means I need you to talk. Oh, uh, okay. You're the one I organizing the shelling point. How's Correct. that going? I mean, you know, chaotic as usual, but it's a public good, so that's good. Uh, how crazy is it that this is a conference about public goods and people actually are here and care about that? Uh, it's honestly the reason why we do it, um, and it's been growing steadily with uh, every single shelling point. I feel it's gotten more and more um, interesting, buzzier and buzzier, um, and people are genuinely excited to be part of the conversations, have the conversations, and also have the space that enables them to chat, come up with new ideas, make things happen. I think there's a, a lot of people out there in the world that understand, at the very least, conceptually, what a public good is. And they all say, yeah, I like public goods. But they've never really had, perhaps, a shelling point to meet up and discuss that. Correct. And, and that's what Shelling Point is really here to, to provide, right? A hundred percent. And I think it's such an important space to hold for people and to enable that freedom of expression, that ability to collaborate, cooperate, communicate, and come together in this really, really authentic, really, really, again, I said buzzy before, but you can feel the energy mm -hmm. when you walk in here. And I think every single Shelling Point that we've done, and you've been to... Right. Kind of all of them now? I have, yeah. Um, well, yeah. How many have we done? Three? We are at four, four now. Four, four, all right. And um, how have they developed? I mean, it's, I feel they have organically grown, very uh, biomimicry style, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like a seedling that has uh, grown into something really quite special. And I think the interest that we saw this time around, I think we sold out within a month. Mm -hmm. um, the the desire to speak, the desire to create uh, engagements, the desire to be in our own conference area, in our DSI space, in the DSI workshops, has been incredible. Mm -hmm. So I am so so grateful that I get to not only you know work to provide the space for people, but actually like check out some very very cool ideas mm -hmm. happening. Right what, now. what is separating this particular shelling point from all the other shelling points that we've had? I think, again, it's just grown into its own thing. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's been so organic and so with so much excitement from people that um, the type of talks that we're seeing now and the type of different areas that we're doing now and the interest uh -huh. that we get from the community about those conversations right. has just blown up. Mm -hmm. So um, it's been beautiful to see because at the end of the day, we've been uh, banging on about this public good stuff for a, a good while. Uh -huh. uh, and some of us are a little bit tired. Yeah. Um, and you know, <laughs> Speaking it's, from experience. <laughs> wait, what? No, never. Um, but yes, it's, it's really good to see and it mm -hmm. makes it all worthwhile. So if uh, a Bankless listeners are out there watching this at home at YouTube, they sadly weren't able to make it out to Shelling Point, describe some adjectives or some emotions that you are feeling that they might need to feel in order to be present here. Wow. Uh, you're asking me about feelings <laughs> after I just told you about being tired? Okay. Um, optimistic. Um, definitely the regenerative and 
at this point, really, really uh, looking towards the future and being able to recognize how many of us there are, mm -hmm. thinking about these things, working towards these things. And I think being able to recognize and again, be together whilst talking about this stuff, whilst working on this same stuff together mm -hmm. is really pulling us together, mm -hmm. together, together, you know, um, is really um, motivating us all to keep, you know, public goods good. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the, the thing I like you about, about you the most, Simona, <laughs> not, not the most, there's plenty of things to like about Simona. <laughs> First off, your eyes are as green as the actual green uh, green of the green pill. <laughs> I did and, that on purpose. And your initials SP are shelling point, which is just so fantastic. I mean, come on. I should just mic drop right now. Absolutely. Right? Like, and go so, off chat. Yeah. Uh, I've been I've just been hounding people at shelling point and giving them the, the microphone. Who should my, my next victim be and why should it be Kevin Owaki over there? I mean, because he's right there. Because he's uh, right there. Proximity, always be uh -huh. efficient about that. Uh -huh. um, but then, you know, there's so many new people coming up into the space right. and so many interesting ideas that um, we should definitely give them uh, a pass to the microphone as well. I think that's absolutely right. And we'll get to them right after I get to Kevin Owaki. Thank you again, Simona, you so for welcome. doing everything you are doing, making public goods good. My pleasure. Thank See you. See you later. Cheers. Good luck to chat. Hello. With me? Yeah, I would love to chat with you, David. Uh, um, Kevin, well, how's it going? I'm good. I heard you're a VC now. Are you a podcast host <laughs> or a VC now? Uh, I'm a little bit of both because okay. I'm here to do one thing, which is to promote going bankless. And that includes okay. financing the uh, explorers of the frontier who yeah. are exploring that frontier. Yeah. Wait, am I being interviewed? I don't know. We're both podcast hosts. So maybe like <laughs> we both assert our hostness. Um, I feel like we're two AIs just like bouncing back questions at each other. Yeah, well, I think you're projecting a little bit of you and Ryan on me and you, but okay. <laughs> uh, Kevin, did you ever think that something like today, shelling point number four, would happen when you started Gitcoin and the first shelling point and the green pill movement. Just reflect on how far you, things have come. Yeah, well in 2017, I started Gitcoin in my basement with no funding and just a little bit of money that I made off of the bull market in 2017. And it's it was so lonely to get something off the ground and the fact that there's hundreds or even thousands of people here at Shelling Point, uh, and also people who have been impacted by Gitcoin and the work that it's done is really incredible. So it feels like we're in a regen movement and uh, it's so much less lonely now. Mm -hmm. uh, did you ever think it was possible to get so many people to care about public goods? Uh, well, I think that people care about public goods, they care about clean air and open source software, but they sort of take them for granted. Once those are withdrawn from you and you don't have clean air uh, and you don't have herd immunity and you don't have those public goods, then that's when you truly notice. And the regen movement is all about building a movement where we don't take them for granted, where we fund them. And by the way, with Web3, we can fund public goods way more efficiently than the state can. So when you wanna talk about going bankless, uh, one of the primary functions of the state is to fund public goods. And if we can do it efficiently and more uh, better on Web3, not only does that legitimize Web3, but it helps more people fund public goods in a bankless way. So uh, it's an incredible movement. And I'm really just thankful to Vitalik for really making public goods a value in his community because it's really trickled down to the rest of us here at Shelling Point and in the Gitcoin community. I think uh, something that you and I definitely share is that we're never going to get crypto fully adopted until we get it legitimized. And the only real way to get it fully legitimized is by providing public goods better than any other system that's come before it. Can you reflect on that as a path towards adoption? Yeah, so I mean, I think that Web3 is the internet of money. Um, the internet of information changed everything in our society because now you could send information across a computer network yeah. that revolutionized education, entertainment, media. We didn't even have social media yeah. before Web1. So now we can send value across a computer network. So anything, the parallel there is that anything with value transfer is gonna be revolutionized in society by Web3. And like, I know that we're all hot on DeFi and financial infrastructure funding art with NFTs, but uh, up and coming uses of public, uh, of, of Web3, I think is gonna be uh, the internet of jobs, revolutionizing how we work for each other and also funding public goods. So I'm just placing my bets for that cycle, for that market cycle, and eventually the market will catch up to that thesis, I think. So this is definitely the biggest shelling point that we've had thus far, and that's largely because new people are coming into this space. The yeah. regenerative finance space, uh, the public goods space. What are some of the newer projects that I should try and talk to while I'm here? 
Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I think that I'm really excited about projects that are that are creating impact. So Impact DAOs, uh, Proof of Humanity is creating UBI, and there's thousands of people in the global south who are being funded by uh, by UBI. Uh, people who, are in some cases, are living off of UBI. And uh, you know, crypto. We, we think that 10% inflation in the United States is high, but when you have 80% inflation in Argentina. Holy shit! Crypto is a game changer to be, right. you know, yeah. be paid in a stable currency. Collectivo, I think, is really good using um, carbon-backed currencies in order to regenerate local communities. I think is an incredible use of this technology. But uh, if you wander around Shelling Point, I'm sure you'll find plenty of projects that are using Web3 for good. Which are any of uh, those that I should go after first? Who should be my next victim? Um, I I think that I should introduce you to. Collectivo yeah. and Proof of Humanity, and there's a project called Gitcoin you should talk to. <laughs> yeah. Where might I find them? Do you see them around? Uh, well, I'm disaffiliated from Gitcoin because right. Gitcoin is now a DAO, but they're, they're everywhere. They're wearing these purple uh, hoodies. Uh, the, per the hoodies say Quadratic Lands on them. Mm -hmm. Quadratic Lands is a world in which we've rewritten the laws of economics in order to fund public goods and to share uh, the creation of the commons. And so uh, if you see someone in a, in a purple Quadratic Lands hoodie, it's a good chance they're with Gitcoin. All right, well, I'm going to tell them that you specifically threw them under the bus when I give them the microphone. Yeah, thank you I so think, much, Kevin. I, th I think they'll enjoy the attention. Thanks for everything you do with Bankless, man. I think you're creating a real movement, and I'm happy to be creating a little regenerative fractal on top of that movement. So keep up the great work. Hey, we're all going to the same future, which is the quadratic lands frontier. Yeah, there you go. Cheers. Come on down, brother. Oh, we're already recording. How's it going, Anthony? Oh, hey, hey, man. How you going? How you uh, going? This isn't your first uh, shelling point, no? Uh, no, uh, no, no, Amsterdam was my first one, yeah. Amsterdam, yeah, but, and also not your first East Denver. No. And it's really great to see you here, man. How yeah. long did it take you to get here? Uh, to get here from Australia? Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. like 18 hours of flying, yeah. Yeah, and this is probably why you've only gone to two East Denver's, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the last one was 2020. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, and this one's like 15 times as big, which is right. crazy. I mean, it's actually so big now. Mm -hmm. This venue is... 10 times bigger than the sports castle at least, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so like as someone who like you skipped, I think, one or two ETH Embers, we had COVID in the middle of the last last time we saw each other. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen this guy since COVID, except I talked to him on the internet all the time. Uh -huh. uh, reflect on how, how different this is. Like, keep on going down that it's, thread. It's, it's not even the same kind of realm. Uh, just, I've been here for a few hours now and just checking out like how it's just evolved from 2020, like right. three years ago. We was a tight knit kind of small community where you kind of knew everyone, right? right uh -huh. And now I don't know like most of the people, and they know they you know some of them come up to me and and kind of say hey, but it's just incredible how big the community has gotten and how it's so diverse now as well, so much right. more diverse. It f feels like everyone from from uh, different backgrounds, everyone's from different backgrounds, different places around the world. Uh, I, I can't even describe it, man. It's yeah. just crazy. So like back at the last ETH Ember we had was at this sports castle. It was one single place. And this is completely different. There was WalletCon, which I saw you at yesterday. Yep. The day before that, there was ZK Day. Yep. There was the uh, Interoperability Summit, which is a two-day conference. And those are the only ones that I, w that I went to. There was like 10 other things that I've gone to. You were at ZK Day for a very long time. Talk about your experience there. Uh, there's a lot of hype around ZK right now. Right. Uh, a lot of hype. Um, and there was, it was packed. Like it was, uh, it was a decent sized venue, but there were so many people there that you got to kind of like push your way through to get through. Um, I think that everyone's excited about ZK because it's a buzzword right now, right. but there's a lot of genuine building happening in the space, right. not just a on- A buzzword for good reason. For good reason, exactly. Yeah. And, and it's not just about scalability or, 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 and, and privacy. There's so many more applications that people are working on. So uh, I, I do kind of like have a little bit of concern that it's going to turn into another one of those. Everyone in crypto thinks that ZK is the coolest thing ever and they're going to speculate on it. But that's what we do in crypto, right? We mm -hmm. speculate, we see right. what's good, what's not, and right. we filter it out as the years go on. But it's just the amount of brain power in that room was, was insane. Yeah, I, I think I remember in East Denver 2020, the last one, the last time we were hanging out, there was like two or three talks about ZK. And I was like, oh yeah, that ZK thing, that's kind of like cool tech, but like I, I can't comprehend it. Exactly. Now there is a whole entire conference, which I think you said was as big as ETH Denver 2020 yes. was yep. in and of itself. Yep. How nuts is that? Yeah, yeah, it was as big. The venue was, was pretty similar in size and the people attending, I mean, I'm pretty sure it was more than was at ETH Denver 2020. Right. But you're right, like the 
term ZK used to be just some, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. Right. You know, maybe that'll be something. Right. And It'll now, be relevant later. <laughs> exactly. And now it's like at the forefront of what we're actually building here. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I said, th there's going to be a lot of noise, but there's a lot of signal still as well. Yeah. So as the other big media person in the Ethereum space, what's it like to like walk around all these events? And you, I, I go to way more conferences than you because you're like so far away. Yeah. So what's it like? People, people are sazzle starved. So what's it like to actually be here? Yeah, it's amazing to meet all the people that kind of consume my content right. and see me on Bankless when I fill in for, mm -hmm. for Ryan on the roll up and things like that, mm -hmm. right? It's just amazing to see people getting uh, and, and telling me how much value they get out of my, my work and my mm -hmm. show and my content. Uh, and it's just like a, it's an experience to reinvigorate the energy, right? Mm -hmm. you, get, you get amongst the people that you see and talk to on Discord, on Twitter, and you have like a different energy when you kind of leave the conference or you decompress and you mm -hmm. think about it. So just, just meeting everyone has been phenomenal. Everyone's so friendly. Right. No one has anything bad to say, right? right. It's always just yeah. like, hey, we think Ethereum's cool. You think Ethereum's cool. Let's let's chat, right? So yeah. it's, it's just great. Yeah. Yeah. And like, there's a, a pretty cool, I call it like Daily Gray and Bankless, like a binary star system. Because like, what's it like to be an independent creator? Because like Bankless is very much a for-profit team. We got, we got employees to pay for. That's Luca that we got. We had to pay this man to hold the camera. <laughs> but you make all of this content you're like no sponsors, no funding. Talk about that philosophy because like we're at Green Pill, which is all about public goods. Exactly, so like the product yeah. market fit here. Talk about that a little bit. I mean, it's definitely inherited from the Ethereum philosophy, from the Gitcoin right. philosophy, from you know obviously Shelling Point, Green Pill, all that sort of stuff. It's just my way of kind of giving back to a community that has given me so much and mm -hmm. understanding that if we all give a little bit to public goods, uh, we can create such an amazing ecosystem of public goods funding, not just mm -hmm. funding with money, but funding with kind of like ideas and, and putting the, uh, the social energy into it and, and keep Ethereum's mission of, I guess like its value and missions of like decentralization, uh, openness, permissionlessness, mm -hmm. all of that, keep that going for decades to come because I will, you know, for years now, and I think for years to come, I'll still worry that Ethereum will some maybe at some point forget about those values. And people like me and, and people like you and other people, I think we need to remind people and keep the mission going. Certainly. And that's what keeps me going, yeah. Certainly. Uh, is there any particular subject matter or talk that you are interested in watching today or tomorrow? Or what are other things about the future of Eat Denver that you're excited about? Yeah, I guess nothing in particular. I'm generally a generalist, so I love being amongst all of uh -huh. it. Yeah, and I like seeing what's happening at, 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 at all, the, all the booths. I went through all the booths downstairs before, and I've just come up to Shelling Point now. So I just love seeing like what everyone's doing, what they're focusing on, and maybe things that I'm missing and not paying enough attention to. I've already had a few of those uh, kind of pop up. So yeah, that's, that's kind of my vibe. Um, but yeah, I think if people want to focus on specific things and not just be a generalist, that's, that's super important as well. Sazel, who should be my next victim that I put a microphone in front of? Oh man, I don't know who you've interviewed so far. There's Quite so a many... lot of people. I got yeah. Kevin Iwaki and Simona just now, uh, Victor and, and Lisa from Aztec. Yeah. Uh, but still, we're at the very beginning of this, so we got a lot of uh, ETH Ember left to explore. Yeah, there's too many people. I yeah. can't even pick one, man. You're gonna find so many cool people to interview here. Yeah. It's just, it's gonna be great. Yeah. Uh, I know you definitely enjoy coming out to conferences, but you have a hard time doing it. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who are in that that camp. Uh, talk to people about the choice to come out to a conference, when to do it, when not to do it, how, how you know to skip one and how you know to make it to one. Yeah, yeah. So for me, it's really just the travel. Uh, I think like because I live in Australia, uh, it take, took me 18 hours to fly here, 18 hour time difference. Um, but a lot of people, it's also financial as well, right? But there are a lot of actual kind of groups and, and opportunities within these kind of events where you can get sponsored to come here yeah. and they'll pay for your trip and everything. And attending the, uh, most of these things is actually free. It's paid for by, by sponsors, basically. So uh, if you're kind of on the fence about coming, maybe for travel time or maybe you can't afford it, look into the, the sponsored kind of things. But also travel time is so worth it. Mm -hmm. Like I don't regret it at all. Yeah, okay, I had to put up with some, some crappy jet lag, but just being here amongst the community, it's a very, very different vibe to online, just putting faces to names that you may interact with and, and talking to people in real life and getting that energy, like just absorbing all the energy. There's nothing like it. It's indescribable. You have to be here to know and to experience it yourself to know what I'm talking about, I think, yeah. Well, Anthony, thank you so much for your time and thank you for everything that you do at The Daily Quay because yes. it is really the only podcast that I listen to after my own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, sir. I appreciate it. <laughs> Cheers, Anthony. Cheers. Cheers. What's up, guys? What's up? Who or what is FireEyes? FireEyes is a small group of crypto natives helping uh, project teams launch uh, tokens and governance systems. Uh, what's the logo for FireEyes? Right here, maybe. 
fire underscore fire. Explaining to people how to find you if you're lo if you're no. no, we don't want people to find us. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what do you guys do again? Sorry, one more time. Uh, so we help project teams launch uh, governance systems and tokens. And uh, how many times have you done that? Uh, yeah, so we've helped work with Gitcoin, Super Rare, ENS, Optimism, most recently Colabland, and uh, a few others, I think. That's uh, quite the resume. What you do? What you do for Optimism? So Optimism, so like the way the FireEyes works goes from very, very high touch to very, very low touch. And Optimism was like actually pretty chill. In the last like three months before the launch, we sort of helped on like some of the airdrop mechanisms and some of the sort of like communication stuff. Yeah, uh, and then what are you guys looking to talk to now? Like, what's the, what's the new frontier for FireEyes? Oh, we can't tell you that, David. <laughs> no, I think like a lot of like the ETH2 restaking stuff, Eigen Layer is obviously like very hot, maybe even like too hot for Fire Eyes right now. Um, but I, Wallet Connect has also got some interesting shit going on, so maybe them. Um, but like cruising, it doesn't. It's not about us having five clients constantly. We can have one. That's fine. Uh, why do people need Fire Eyes? I think I can explain that a little bit more. But um, teams are usually focused on the product, right, and not thinking about tokens. Um, and they've never really gone through that tokenization event, and there's a lot of nuances and things that people want to learn about that and know about that and need that like hand-holding experience. Um, so we've done multiple token launches, launched billions of dollars worth of tokens at this point for leading projects, so having that advice and that uh, insight while you're going through that process is super helpful. Uh, Lucas, what is, what's a podcast NFT? Podcast NFTs are collectible podcasts, uh, and you can collect the bankless one right now at collectibles.bankless.com. Lucas, what's the future of podcast NFTs? Uh, I think it's a new way for content creators to monetize uh, their content uh, that's not sponsors. So if you are an avid listener of the Bankless podcast, you probably skip through all those sponsors uh, that David says and Luke is uh, the editor helping. <laughs> helping. <say. laughs> but that's no fun for uh, viewers, and it's really not the best thing for content creators. You know, we've had some uh, issues with sponsors in the past, and. Uh, Content NFTs enable this new monetization strategy for content creators to monetize their work directly and for their audiences to own that work as well. So the ownership model, the ownership economy that we've talked about with Legion, which is also a collectible podcast. If you just peeped the ears of many Bankless listeners out there who actually might already know all about podcast NFTs, but perhaps for all the ones that don't, well, where's the top of the funnel? Where should they go to learn more? Yeah, I think right now collectibles.bankless.com is probably uh, where you can learn the most about podcast NFTs. Um, but there's more in the works coming in the, the next few weeks and months here. So, uh, can we speak more about that, or is that going to stay under the radar? Yeah. So there's a, currently a stealth project that is uh, I'm working on that will help content creators tokenize all of their work, um, starting with podcasts. It's a stealth product that has to do with podcast NFTs. That's made by the guy who helped do Bankless do podcast NFTs. I think I know where this goes. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. We're going to go on the run. All right. Thank you, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, I found my next target. Here we go. Excuse me, sir. Do you mind? What's up? What's your name? Uh, Frog Monkey. That's what they call me. It is Frog Monkey. Frog Monkey, why did you leave Bankless? Why did I? <laughs> oh, man. You're going fucking... <laughs> is this, this is like straight hard hits. Um, well, I went to go uh, work at uh, one of the leading companies in DeFi. Okay. Acceptable. Uh, what company? Nice can, what, what company is that? Uh, Uniswap Labs. Oh, nice. Uh, giant, oh, it's right here. What you look at that? What do you do at Uniswap? Um, I am a writer, uh, so like I do a bit of content strategy, which I used to do for Bankless as well, uh, and a bit of the writing too. Mm -hmm. What's the last thing you wrote about? Um, the last thing that I wrote about was the our pay with any token um, launch mm. NFT feature launch, which I thought was pretty cool. It's just like. You can buy NFTs with any token, whatever you have in your wallet. It doesn't have to be right because uh, Uniswap recently acquired that uh, NFT aggregator, right? Yep, Genie. Genie, yeah. Is it still called Genie, or is the name Genie gone? No, it's just uh, uh, the Uniswap NFT aggregator at this point. Love it, love it. Uh, what else is going on at Uniswap? Oh man, um, there is a lot going on at uh, Uniswap. It's interesting because we've grown a lot as a company in the past year or so, mm -hmm. and like we've been able to focus on different like products, right? Because like when you think Uniswap, you think the AMM, which for good reason. But now we've we've you know moved into um, we've like moved into like this web interface that we use that we're expanding on. Uh, we've moved into NFT stuff. We have like some exciting product launches coming up as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like a, a fully fleshed out, you know. The, the way I like to think about it is like Uniswap is sort of like a decentralized way to getting into DeFi, right? Mm -hmm. Like you don't, you don't, you shouldn't have to go through CeFi to access sure. all yeah. the cool shit um, that's happening in DeFi. And so like Uniswap is one of the places to get started there, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of how I think about it. 
I woke up this morning and I saw a promo tweet from Uniswap of a very awesome GIF, animated GIF, yes. and nothing happened at the end of it, uh, which is just like an announcement of an announcement. Frog, what is that announcement? I don't know. Uh, wasn't there also a recent announcement by this cool company building out uh, Base? It's a very similar like uh, uh, approach. We have something big coming. We're teasing it. Um, we're at you know we're at ETH Denver uh, uh -huh. in 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 presence. So maybe this is a coincidence. Maybe not. But Uniswap as a layer two. Um, well, the best way to find out is to go to uh, our talk tomorrow at 9 a.m. on the main stage. Cal's given that. I don't know if this is live. Well, or Frog, not, that's just great because this interview is not going to come out until the day after. So you can go ahead and tell me right now. I see. I see. Well. Um, <laughs> no. I'm going to get in trouble for doing that. I want to, man. <laughs> I want to. Yo, so I'm a huge Dark Souls fan, and this looks a lot like Dark Souls. Yo. Uh, did you build this? Uh, yeah, I've been building this for the past uh, three years. Uh, what's it called? It's called The Fabled. Uh, it looks like Dark Souls. Yeah, that's the point, pretty much. It's. Uh, I love Dark Souls. Yeah, awesome. Uh, it's beautiful, uh, but you're here at East Denver. Why is it crypto? Why is a game at ETH Ember? Yeah, so all of the characters, weapons, and items that you have in our game are uh, NFTs that you can earn uh, and have the ability to mint. Uh, and then you go through these levels, you defeat really challenging bosses a la Dark Souls or Elden Ring, yeah. and uh, earn rewards. God, this game is absolutely beautiful. Okay, you said uh, mint because you can earn them. So this is a is what what's the vibe of this game? Like, talk talk a little bit more about what the crypto so aspects. Th the game itself is free to play, completely free to get into. Okay. Uh, and then you have a choice if you want to mint your characters, uh, weapons, and items to get access to the marketplace, to get access to the on-chain token that's used for all marketplace transactions, and um, we also have a multiplayer functionality coming in down the line where people can stake their NFTs. And, um, and their tokens in high stakes tournaments uh, to face each other. Okay, so this seems like really sophisticated because there's all these like Web3 games and they're all seemingly like kind of cute, easy flash animation style games. This looks like a AAA game. I was, well, honestly, I was done recording and I saw this game and I was like, Luke, hit record. Uh, how, when did you know that you wanted to put assets into your game? How did you make that decision? Yeah, so I, I saw what was happening in the Web3 uh, kind of landscape, and I had already built out quite a lot of the game's foundation at that point as well. Uh -huh. And so I figured there was a market opportunity, and I was also ahead of things in terms of development. Um, so it kind of made sense. And then I had also had known some people uh, in the past who had helped uh, develop other blockchain functionality within their own game. And so it just kind of made sense to connect with them, integrate these, these blockchain features that I was thinking about into my own game. And uh, now we're here at East Denver showcasing it. Uh, have you been a crypto person before you were a game person? Or like, how did that happen? No, I was a, I was a game person first. Um, and then I got into crypto um, after I saw, you know, I became fascinated with the technology behind it. And I saw the potential there was um, in a whole bunch of different domains, mm -hmm. um, gaming in particular. So how do the assets in the game, do they help the company make money? Yeah, so all of we make money through all of the transactions that players make. Um, they mint their NFTs from us uh, at first. Uh, same with the weapons and items and things like that, um, and, as well as the token itself. Part of all on-chain um, transactions, any, any, anything that anybody buys, a portion of that goes back into the token. Very cool. OK, so there's an ERC-20 token? Correct. Bunch of NFTs that you get while you earn. Like, if you, are there, is it like a loop-based system? Yes. Okay, so kind of like Diablo and Borderlands? Yep. Exactly. So like rarity? Yep. And like an item, you kill a boss, an item lands on the ground, uh, RNG, and then like maybe that item is a legendary, and that item is an NFT? Exactly. Is that a taxable event? Um, good question. <laughs> You're not a tax lawyer, and you yeah. don't have to answer that. That was mainly for the humor. Yeah. That, one's, uh, that one's for you, Gary. 
Uh, what's this, okay, once again, what's this game called and how do people sign up to play it? Yeah, so the game is called The Fabled, and uh, you can go on our website, uh, thefabled.xyz, and you can also find us on Steam um, at The Fabled or on, at Twitter um, at The Fabled. So. I'm going to go home and play this game as soon as I get home from East Denver. Uh, what was your name? Luke. Luke, thank you so much. Uh, nice I've always you. wanted something like this. I hope it is. it plays as good as it looks, because oh, yeah. it looks pretty damn good. Thank you, thank you. Oh, my health is going all the way to zero. Oh, why am I regaining health? How's it going, Antonio? Fucking right, pretty good. How's it going? So we are in the, a really sick uh, ZK Sync era. Yeah. Brand new uh, naming for for ZK Sync. How did the is. era come about? Uh, well, it's a new, a new era for Ethereum. So that's basically it. And then we have this our symbol, our logo. You can see it uh -huh. over there. We just leave for the community to learn what what yeah. it is about. Okay, so uh, ZK Sync's got uh, brand new era, brand yeah. new branding. Yeah. Uh, it's also uh, for coming very soon to Mainnet. Mainnet well, is up and running yeah. with uh, whitelisted onboarding. Is that the current state of things? That's, yeah, that it is. It's, it's approved projects, so basically any project that deployed on the testnet uh, and submitted a form with just a few information about the project and the smart contact addresses on testnet will be allowed to bridge funds on Mainnet and deploy the projects. So that's where we are right now. Amazing. Uh, so, I mean, you guys are already have like a ton of people. I mean, what it looks like asking a bunch of questions. Yeah. What are people curious about? What, what about ZK Sync has piqued the curiosity of who? Developers, community members? Like, what's the vibe? Oh, uh, well, they they want to know what, what ZK is about. What is zero knowledge proofs? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are asking us about privacy uh, in general. Uh, a lot of people are asking us about which projects are in ZK Sync already. Which comments will be available? And how much which uh, projects will be available well you can go to ecosystem.cksync.io uh, I can name a few like uh, Aave Uniswap Curve Compound uh, we have Remark for NFTs uh, we have I mean anything you can think of we have wallets uh, like Argent uh, they will probably kill me because I'm missing a lot of important ones but mm -hmm. yeah ecosystem.cksync.io you will find them sure and there's a big ecosystem fund right for, for, the, for the new era of, of ZK Sync? Yes, it is. Yeah. So part of the funding that we had, we will go to the to projects. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're still in progress. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if uh, developers are interested in building in ZK Sync or they just want to learn more, where's the top of the funnel? So first of all, come to our docs. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in our website, zksync.io. And yeah, our docs is the top funnel. We have a lot of examples. Uh, migration guides, if you are, have a project already running on Ethereum or other EBM, we have uh, guides to migrate your project uh, with everything you need to know. Sticky Sync is uh, compatible with Solidity, Viper, Hardhat, Metamask, all the existing toolings works, so it's super easy for developers to migrate projects. So, yeah, that's perfect. beautiful. Uh, I know that there's a big race to be first. The memes going around, uh, we were the first ZK EVM. Yeah, yeah. Was ZK Sync the first ZK EVM? Well, we are on and mainnet. And why is the answer yes? Yes, we are, we are on mainnet. Uh, there are people deploying it, and they are people, there are people using it as we speak. So I would say that's, yeah, we are first. I would say. <laughs> oh, man, that's it. Simple awesome. as that. Thanks so much, Antonio. Yeah, thank you. We're going to go talk to MetaMask. Yo. What's up? Yo. What's going on, oh, my man? What's up, man? Francisco, how's, how's it going? Oh, good, oh, good. Glad to be here, man. Where are we? Oh, we're at the MetaMask booth. Yeah, MetaMask and Fury booth, man. Glad yeah, there's to be a, here. there's a lot of cool things that MetaMask's doing. Uh, what are they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can I can talk about a lot of things, man. But yeah. uh, snaps, snaps are cool. Yeah. People, if they know what MetaMask snaps are, extension on on top of your wallet. Any developer out there can build uh, snaps today with a bunch of bounty. Man, Ethereum uh, e Denver vibe is always the same. It's really mm -hmm. cool. We have a bunch of bounty on snaps, on SDK, mobile SDK. Really like, recommend everybody check this out. What's yeah. a snap? Man, this is an extension. Yeah, that's a snappy, a snappy snap. Literally, you can extend the functionality on uh, on your wallet today. Think about non EVM compatible snap, BTC snap, notification, communication snap, layer two snaps. So anybody in the community can build cool snaps today. Is it making MetaMask Turing complete? Is that the deal? Ah, yeah, I wish I wish to answer that, but uh, man, anybody can. Uh, whatever feature they want to build, they yeah. can think about as snaps today. I think this is what uh, like really power back to the community, and uh, and I'm excited about that. We launched this at Denver, and today we have a bunch of snaps already pre-built. What's and, your uh, favorite snap, and what does it do? 
Man, uh, NodeVM compatible snap. I love like the the Starknet snap. I love the BTC snap. So people can interact actually with other ah. uh, compatible IPFS snap. You can literally store stuff on uh, on top of your MetaMask using IPFS. Okay, so Starknet isn't an EVM chain, which means that MetaMask isn't functional out of the box. So there is a Starknet snap that makes MetaMask work on Starknet. Is that the deal? Exactly. Who exactly. who wrote who built that snap? Who, our, who snapped that? Uh, who snapped that? So this is our team before, actually, like two weeks ago, when we saw each other in uh, yeah. in the Starquest session. But a uh, bunch of like hackathon winners build new snaps. I'm super excited also about these MPC snaps, mm -hmm. so account recovery snaps, so people can actually use uh, direct different accounts to recover in your account. I think this is amazing. And uh, built by the community, for the community. And uh, I'm excited about uh, when we will ship to Stable, you know? So uh, I saw this morning, that we talked about this on the weekly roll-up this morning, ERC4337 is now a smart contract on Ethereum. How does that change MetaMask? What does that, what does that mean for, for MetaMask? Man, I'm excited about any account abstraction. I've been like, during the Denver hearing like, I don't know, 10 panels on that. Yov is amazing. Uh, we had him on a, on a cool panel and I'm excited on those use cases like MPC, uh, recovery. Uh, think about also like notification. Uh, Batch transaction snaps. I think this is something that uh, that uh, will be will be fun to see. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are tons of applications also on the AE section, and uh, I'm excited about this. Yeah, the other big news that I believe was announced specifically here at East Denver was MetaMask has an SDK for um, what Unity, yeah. the game engine. Exactly. Why is that such a big deal? Yeah, I mean, think about like any uh, any game developer out there, Web two or Web three, can actually integrate natively. Uh, MetaMask. Mm -hmm. So we launched this SDK. They are available also on the on the Unity marketplace, and this is super exciting. Also, in a couple of weeks, we are at GDC, where we're actually showing and, and build with game developers out there. But uh, and by the way, SDK is a big uh, part of our bounties, and uh, I'm excited because today, if you want to execute batch transaction or like doing specific game use case, you need to go through like a MetaMask externally, and today you can actually like drive that directly from a mobile, a MetaMask mobile SDK. Right, okay, uh, you said you're talking about the word, this bounty, this bounty word a lot. We all know what bounties are, you get money. How much money is there to get? Man, man, bounties are just the start, right? We have like a, a 40K bounty, so snaps, uh, snaps is a big chunk, uh, uh, Infura are a big chunk, we have also SDK, but I'm excited also about what's coming after the hackathon, people can just, you know, be part of those developer community call, Twitter spaces, uh, be part of our MetaMask Grants DAO that you probably know also about, mm -hmm. but, uh, and send proposal, get, get into an ecosystem, have more community members, be excited. I think like this is what's all about, like passion, building and sharing within and for the community. Uh, if people just got peaked and they want some of that bounty or they want to learn more about the SDK or they want to build a snap, or they want to do something else in MetaMask, where should they go? Where's the top of the rabbit Man, hole? Top resources. Uh, I think we are here at the booth all those 10 days. Mm -hmm. We're back, back, in the, back in those past five days in, uh, in the hackathon. Uh, Discord, uh, I mean, we are a little bit everywhere. Like, shoot us a message, DM us. Really make sure that you are speaking uh, uh, with us. And we want to be involved also in building the snap with you, right? And, and anything like community is important. Amazing. Thank you so much, Francisco. Yeah, man. Cheers. Thanks, David. What's up, Bash? Hey. How's I'm, it going? It's good. How are you? Uh, what, what booth are we at? We are at Risk Zero. What's Risk Zero? Risk Zero is a ZK scaling solution for blockchains. We're oh, building Oh, I love the word ZK. Yeah. What does that mean? I think it's everybody's favorite word this <laughs> week. I've, 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 I, I, everyone is, it's mm -hmm. on, the, it's on the, the tip of everybody's tongue. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so it's zero knowledge. It's a, basically a special kind of moon math uh, that makes it really easy and cheap to scale blockchains like in a way that we haven't really had accessible to us before. What does risk zero mean? Is there zero risk? Well, so it's actually, so we're, we're built on the risk five instruction set. So it's like really nerdy uh -huh. computer parlance. Um, but so it's, it's not it's R-I-S-K, it's R-I-S-C. It's R-I-S-C, yeah. yeah. So it's like What does that mean? Can you explain set. that like I'm five? Yeah, so the risk five instruction set, basically, well, maybe not like you're five. Computers need instructions <laughs> to figure out how to do things. Um, Intel usually makes these computer chips and they have really complicated sets of instructions. Risk Five is a set of really simple instructions that are modular, so you can sort of build computers that are um, a little more customized, and mm -hmm. they can run much faster. So basically, what Risk Zero has built is a zk virtual machine, so much in the way that you have like the Ethereum virtual machine. Right. It's just a, a computer that can run in zk. 
okay, so ZK at the EVM level is like ZK at the very big like basement, all the way down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. What do you get when you do that? Um, well, basically, you get the ability to have verifiably correct compute, uh -huh. um, which means that you can make a lot more security assumptions about the things that you're trying to compute. Um, it also means, you know, when you have the the when you have the virtual machine happening off chain, like off of the EVM, it means that you're actually able to do really, really big computations uh, much, much faster and cheaper than you would be able to do them on chain. Mm -hmm. So, like, what is this like a faster blockchain? Yeah, it's basically, but it's not It's not just like one faster blockchain. So what we're trying to do is actually bring ZK functionality and the ability to do much larger computations than you can do on-chain to every and any chain. So we're, we, we're, we're talking about it like horizontal ZK availability to sort of the whole blockchain space. Mm -hmm. Whereas most like ZK projects right now are trying to get you to move platforms. So they mm -hmm. want you to like move to a new layer one. Right. Ooh, we don't like that. We don't want anyone to move off of Ethereum, obviously, right. ETH Denver. Um, so we're kind of, we're trying to go to developers wherever they are. Okay, so is this a technology that blockchains can implement? Yes. So any blockchain can implement it. And what you you know one, one another way to think about what we're doing is we're sort of like separating compute and data availability. So what it allows you to do is just supercharge your ability to compute things okay. on your blockchain and do it way, way faster and way, way cheaper. You do it off the chain and then it all like basically merkleizes to your chain. You can have verifiably correct compute. And then any of your applications can access that compute and know that it was done correctly. Okay, so how would a user, perhaps a power user, but non-technical, when will they run into risk zero first? Like, what are they, what's the first time they're going to be interfacing with it? They they won't. Um, oh, okay. And that's like the that's kind of the beauty of it. It's a it's really a developer tool set. Um, they will experience the joy of it because their applications will be much faster and much much cheaper. And you know things will actually work in a way that sometimes on Ethereum they currently don't. Um, you know we're, we want to we want to make the gas prices of everything you do from you know trading on Uniswap to buying a crypto dick butt on OpenSea like mm -hmm. much much cheaper. So who, which developers is this relevant for? This is for blockchain layer one or layer two protocol it's, yeah, devs? Yeah, it's for layer ones, it's for um, layer twos, okay. it's for application developers that are interested in making their applications much faster or, or in using any of the like native privacy tools that kind of come with zero knowledge of, uh, mm -hmm. tooling. So basically, you know, it's dApps, it's, it's, it's also chains. It's layer twos, especially anything optimistic. Mm -hmm. So with optimistic, right. you have this like seven day dispute, like fraud proof right. window. With risk zero, you're able to you're able to take that dispute time because of the verifiably correct computing that's happening off the chain and in the background. Mm -hmm. You're able to take that actually down to like 10 seconds. Okay, so it's sick. taking the optimistic out of optimistic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't need optimistic if you right. can verifiably correctly prove something. Right, right. And, like, <laughs> and just to really explain that, because not everyone knows why an optimistic rollup is called an optimistic rollup. Mm -hmm. It's because you settle down to the, the Ethereum layer one optimistically, and you need fraud proofs to really have security yeah. about that. But with risk zero, it sounds like you yeah. can really just accelerate that whole fraud proof process exactly. very, very it quickly. It happens like, and, and, you know, in the moment of the computation is needed. Uh, okay, so like, but what, what's the upside for risk zero? Is this, is this a token? Is this a chain? Uh, is, is this an open source software tool set? How does this team have upside? Yeah, I mean, the, we're kind of like still figuring out whether whether or not we're going to do a token or what that's going to look like, but ultimately it will be a chain. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be permissionless, which means that anyone can start providing proving services. So you can provide compute into the network. And, you know, there will be some type of token as far as like, I don't know. Personally, I'm kind of into not doing a pre-mine, but we'll have to see what our investors say about that. <laughs> I like I like the uh, I like the token word at the very least. So that, that gets me up and going. Yeah, let's uh, see. Ash, if uh, people are piqued by probably I think the more brainy subject that we've ever recorded today, uh, where's the top of this uh, top of this rabbit hole? How do people learn more? Yeah, you can go to our site. Um, it's just riskzero.com. It's R I S C Z E R O. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have a Discord channel. So if you want to kind of get into the weeds, ask more questions, you can find our team on the Discord channel, which is also um, linked on our website. Ash, are you the person who is on the frontier of the combination of being the most technically minded and the most swaggy in all of crypto? I would say. There are definitely some competitors in the running for most swaggy, but I have to be up there. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> think so. Yeah. Ash, thank you so much. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>
I found this pool. It's all orange. We're gonna go figure it out. Hey, hey what's hey, up, Darren? Oh, hello. How's it going, my man? I, I'm, I'm very well. Yeah, uh, where are we? Uh, we are at the rocket pool stand uh, at East Denver. Uh, and what you guys do, what's going on here? Uh, so over here, we have a, a bicycle um, that is powering a, uh, an Ethereum node. He's staking Ethereum right now? He is staking Ethereum right if now. If he stops spikes and spicing, is he going to get slashed? Uh, no, no. It, it, there's, a, there's a battery attached, so it's a, it, it keeps powering it up. But uh, no, so the node that he's uh, powering is, uh, runs on about 5 watts, and that's ample for a, a bike. So yeah. So he's powering Ethereum right now. He is. He's processing transactions. That's why right. we have come so far, haven't we? This From is this is, of work. this is what I came, <laughs> this is what I came here for. This is the technology I've always That's been right. excited about. That's hey, amazing. I mean, this is an example of decentralization, right? Yes. Like this is a fun gimmick, but it's only possible because of yeah. we can like this is a decentralized technology. I'd yeah, say. That's right. So the, the cost of one of those little boxes is something like six hundred bucks. Yeah. So it's it's really really minimal. Well, also, I mean, like. If that guy was doing a bicycle to process uh, SHA-256 ASICs, <laughs> he wouldn't be making any Bitcoins. He'd oh, be we, losing. We'd, we'd have to have the whole room Everyone, uh, riding every, bicycles. Yeah, yeah, and we would still be at like one, one <laughs> yeah, quarter right. of the power. Exactly. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, okay, what, what's, what's coming up and exciting in the world of Rocket Pool? Uh, so we have our Atlas release coming out soon, mm -hmm. uh, kind of around April. Uh, that will um, support withdrawals, so the whole Shanghai hard fork thing. Mm -hmm. um, but it will also lower the collateral requirement for node operators from 16 ETH to 8 ETH. And that, what does that do for stakers? Uh, that means there's going to be a lot more space for our ETH. So our ETH is, there's a lot of demand for our ETH at the moment, uh, and our decentralized network uh, is kind of keeping up with the supply, but we need to be able to scale a lot faster. Uh, and so that, with, by reducing this collateral limit, it means that we can scale up much, much faster. There's been a frequent question in the uh, Bankless uh, Nation Discord about yeah. why our ETH has a premium and why staked yes. ETH has a discount. Is yes. the answer, the answer I've been giving, and hopefully it's yeah, correct, yeah. Yep. the answer to that I've been giving is that our ETH has a premium because Rocket Pool is capital constrained, yes, which right. is a function of decentralization. Is that the correct answer? That's a, that's a perfect answer, yeah, yeah. Okay, yep. and then the our ETH mini pools, which are going to go down to an ETH collateral requirement, yep. double the capacity of our ETH, right? Oh, well, actually, it, uh, on day one, it three X's, uh, three X's? The, the, okay. yeah, because it's 24 ETH. Ah, uh, right. That's how you do math. Yeah, yeah. The Bankless Nation knows I'm bad at math. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, actually, uh, on day one, it three X's. Uh, but because we've lowered the collateral limit, it means that we are then uh, able to access a, a whole. So there's essentially there's a lot more people with eight ETH than mm -hmm. there is with 16. And yeah. so we're actually kind of seeing about maybe a five X is, is close to where we want to be. And you also get more yield, right? This is correct. So, uh, so you get about 16% more uh, no. yield from going from a 16 to an 8, uh, which, and also about 40% more than being a solo staker. 40% more. So you make 40% more yield staking with Rocket Pool than you do as a solo staker? Yep, that's right. And, uh, but that's only if you run a node, not by simply owning RE. No, that's right. Uh, if right. you run a node. And in right. fact, uh, Atlas, which is our next release, uh, will include a migration for solo stakers. Mm -hmm. So the solo stakers uh, who are using the BLS credential can migrate to, to Rocket Ball. And yeah. How much of uh, the trading channel is here? A lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, is is that kind of, of energy like, are, are, do, are they all around we us right I, now? We, we have, we, I, we've done hardly any of this. Yeah. They're, all of this that you see here is, is basically the Rocket Ball community. Uh -huh. uh, so the is, is the bike the, uh, an art, art, a trading we person? Did, we didn't, I did nothing. No, they that. just showed up with that. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you guys bought the booth and they were like, "All right, I got them bringing my bike." They they brought the they brought the Tic Tacs. I think we've got about two thousand uh, packs of Tic Tacs. Uh, they put stickers on the Tic Tacs and. Yeah, so it's been absolutely amazing. They're, they're a great, great community. Yeah, what, what's it like? So you've been in, you've been making Rocket Pool 2017. Uh, the, yeah. In the, I don't know if that's when the Discord was made, but the trading chat, which is yeah. like the center of the Rocket Pool community, that's why we're calling it's the, it. It's the heart. It's yeah. the heart. Yeah. When did that really start to arise? Um, I think it must have been around. Well, actually, uh, Dave started in 2016. Mm -hmm. We moved to Discord quite early on, uh, huh. but probably around. Around the, like 2018, when I when I started with Rocket Pool, yeah. the the trading channel was already established. It yeah. was already kind of flowing and everything. 
But how now it's off the off the charts. I can't keep up with the chat. It's, right? It's how incredible. has like the the culture of hashtag trading? Uh, and it's like they're not they're they're focused on their RPL price, but like yeah, it's, yeah, it's really it's, just like the town square of Rocket Pool. How has that culture developed? Uh, it's it's developed a, a lot. I mean, there's a lot of OG kind of Rocket Pool people in there. So there's a brains trust actually within the within the kind of trading um kind of channel. Uh, they've also got like it's got a whole culture in itself in the sense that you know poaps we we use there are a, a, probably about ten poaps a week that get issued. Uh, on they all, love all sorts of like, they love po -apps. They, lo they will make yeah. a poap over absolutely everything. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. If you turn up one day, they'll, yeah. they'll make up a poap. They might. They might make a poap for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Speaking of poaps, we got Isabella behind us. <laughs> What's up? Actually, if you yeah, don't yeah. mind, I'm going to go yeah, talk yeah, to yeah, Isabella. Yeah. 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 Hello. How are hey, you? How's it going? Going well. How are you? Good. Uh, Good. How's your eat Denver? Uh, eat Denver's going marvelously. How are you, As, David? Uh, so this is, is Isabella from from Poap, who Hi, I'm now realizing is perfectly suited. <laughs> as is the nature of uh, Patricio. Was this your vibe, or like how did the how did? Believe it or not, I actually had this suit before I joined Poap. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it was kind of meant to be. Nice. I will. The the branding is perfect. Uh, it's worked out well. How many Poaps have you issued? Uh, how many pull ups have I issued? Uh, I think just within the last couple of days, uh, probably over 200. Is that draining? Uh, you know what? Like, no, actually. I found yeah. uh, I kind of enjoy socializing with uh, people in the pull up community. Uh, it's a good excuse to meet people, mm -hmm. a good excuse to tell people what we do. Uh, so, I don't know. I think at first I used to find it draining, but after a little while, you build some muscle around it. Do you have a favorite pull up? Do I have a favorite pull up? Actually, yes. Uh, so uh, I'm can gonna I have you. it? No, oh. uh, no. So I'll show you my favorite poem, though. <laughs> okay. Uh, so there was a favorite poem uh, that I made when we did something for the Ethereum merge. Uh, so let me see if I find it. Uh, That's a lot of poems. It's, 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 it's a lot of poems. She's scrolling quite a lot. It's this one. Uh, watch for, uh, watch for yeah. the merge at 7 a.m. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah. basically it's a poem that we issued for uh, a party that we had to celebrate the merge in uh, Berlin right. uh, with our entire team in a hotel room uh, watching the painting party. <laughs> uh, and uh, there's uh, a bunch of pictures attached to it of uh, all of us in the hotel room at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. uh, we were working hard the night before, so uh, it has a lot of good memories attached. Do you have an Isabella poem app that I can collect right now? I do. Can we do this right now? We absolutely can. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get Isabella's poem app. Woo! Let's see. There you go. Works like a charm Amazing. every single time. Uh, the oh. process has become a lot smoother. Sorry? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, mean, I would like to say, I got my card. Okay. I loaded up my PO apps. I'm so excited to bring it here so everyone could say I met David at Eat Denver. And you know where that card is? Where? At my desk at home. Amazing. So you don't have a PO app? I, I had to have a PO app here. Mm -hmm. uh, there absolutely needs to be a PO app for meeting people from Bankless. We, so we actually had our first ever Bankless meetup yesterday. And was there a PO app? And Chris, Christina brought a poem. up. Yes. Christina, you're a hero. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Christina. Christina, come say hi. David, and, how is your uh, East Denver going? Oh my God, I love being on the other side of the microphone. It's going so great. Yeah. Uh, I had a talk up at Shelling Point this morning. Okay. Uh, all about how permissionless protocols make us responsible humans. Uh, and then after that, me and Luke have just been running around with the camera and microphones, uh, kind of like attacking people with them as I've just okay. done to you. Uh, you know what, I'm happy for it. Yeah, yeah, I've been having a fun time. I've gone to every single East Denver, and I wouldn't dare miss yeah. them. Yeah, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, what is the event that you're looking forward to uh, the most after East Denver? After East Denver, uh, so there is uh, DevCon just got announced in 2024. Okay, but that is a very long time away. Uh, the next event that I know about is ECC. Okay, but ETH uh, Buenos Aires also just got announced, or ETH Argentina in uh, September. ETH Argentina, I think, is coming. Uh, I know uh, there's ETH Tokyo in April. Yeah, I don't know if uh, I can make that one. It's very far away. Yes. It's very, uh, very far away. Maybe Are you I, that one? Uh, I hope, but probably not. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, it's between that and permissionless, and uh, realistically speaking, going from Tokyo to Austin mm -hmm. is going to be probably too much. I went yeah. from Paris here, and it was a lot. Yeah. From Tokyo to Austin, yeah. it's going to be more. Certainly, yeah. yeah. You did say permissionless. I probably should say permissionless. The conference that I'm helping organize is definitely the one I'm very, very excited about. Uh, I was trying to open up the table for you to talk about permissionless. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I did not take the bait in the slightest. No, you know what? You didn't. It's okay. uh, so, Isabella, what's going on at POAP? What are you guys working on? Like, what's the new frontier of development? Uh, we're working on a lot of incredibly exciting things. And, David, I wish I could drop Alpha for you here, but I'm afraid I'm not going to do that. <sighs> Usually people reserve the Alpha for me, but I'll have to let you go without it. This time around. Isabella, thank you so much. David, thanks so much. Cheers. Uh, how many of these do you have, Patricio? That's secret information. <laughs> <laughs> so for those that don't know, this is Patricio Warthaler, aka the king of POAPs. Do you, do you have an official nickname? I call myself the inventor of POAPs. Inventor of POAPs? 
because king comes with lots of responsibility and i don't want more of that in my life i have a lot yeah protocols not people not protocols not people not kings this is what we say don't we um, Patricia, show how many pubs do you have not only we say so i mean it because yeah. in this ecosystem there are a lot that say a lot about decentralization mm -hmm. and only a handful mean it um how many pubs i have um it's likely over a thousand, but because I only mean pubs that I care a lot. So mm. if you give me a pub and I don't pretty, I don't feel compelled for it. It's like I don't want this crap thing between my precious collectibles. Mm -hmm. Patricio, what's going on in the world of Pro App? What are you guys building that's behind the scenes? Tell um, me, give me the alpha. Things are going so well. We are building so much that it hurts. Um, that's what Isabella said. I mean, it, it maybe it is true. Uh -huh. Uh, no, seriously, um, this bear market is being a blessing. We don't love it. We wish our bugs were pumping. Mm -hmm. We have many bugs that are really depressed. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, it feels nice to finally be appreciated for what we do, mm -hmm. not so much for our ability to pump some other collection or something. Mm -hmm. And it is happening. And fundamentally speaking on the things we care about, which is how happy people are getting these digital collectibles, how, what, how, how valuable the connections they make are, Things never been better. Mm -hmm. By far, this is the greatest time in the 40 years of Pow Up. I, I can imagine because I think every time I've gone to a different booth, everyone's got a Pow Up to issue. And, and this is the beginning. We have really exciting plans that augment these dynamics to unseen levels. Uh -huh. Patricio, thank you for everything you've done. Uh, people love Pow Ups, I uh, think, more than anything in this space. So You know what people love more? Uh -huh. Bankless. <laughs> That's it. I'm not actually too sure about that one. Well, I love it a lot. <laughs> well, thank you, Patricia. I pleasure. also love POAFs. Cheers. All right. We need to go find uh, Jesse from Base. And I've been told that Jesse from Base is in the basement, is what I've been told. So we're going to go find him. It's really dark down here. So Jesse, I was told that I would find you in the basement. Yes, we are here in the basement at home base. I was just, I tweeted, I said, and me and Stani had a, a little fireside down here. Uh -huh. I said, me and Stani are getting based, talking about base in the basement at home base at East Denver. Did you know what you were doing when you guys named the name base? We, we knew what we were doing. It was, uh, <laughs> you know. How quickly after you named it base was the first based joke made? Immediately. Imme <laughs> Immediately. It was a moment. I mean, literally, we were going through naming. And this was actually before we were building an L2. We were iterating through a bunch of different products. And we landed on the name base um, uh, on one of the earlier products. And it was me and Max Brandsburg who runs the consumer, like all the consumer products at Coinbase. And we were just kind of going through names. And he was like, what if we said base? And both of us were just like, oh, my God. Okay, we should pack, unpack like how many layers this goes deep. So we have Coinbase, Coin so base. it's already in base. Yes. Uh, but Coin is the equity, yep. and now Base is the chain, so that's one layer. Yep. Uh, home base, as in like it's Coinbase's home base, mm -hmm. so that's another layer. Yep. And how many more layers does this go after this? I mean, base like it's the you know a foundational layer of mm -hmm. the crypto economy. That's another one. Um, I mean, based in that, we have base.org, which is just an incredible domain. It's a, it's mm -hmm. a one, one uh, syllable word that has such meaning. You know, I, I, there's so many reasons base is, is a good name. But to the point the, of like you come up with a name and you're like, well, now, now we need to make a chain. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. No, no. We, 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 I, I mean, really the journey to the chain was a journey of knowing that we needed to figure out how to bring Coinbase on chain and not knowing how to do it but like knowing it in our hearts that that was the process we were trying to do. And I think we landed on the name base pretty early and it felt aligned to that mission. And then it took us a few tries to be like, oh, what's the right way to do that? And out the other side came the L2 and we named it base and it all fit because we've been thinking with that mission for almost two years. Certainly. And so I think people, if you ask them the question, hey, what's Coinbase? They would say, oh, it's, it's Coinbase.com. It's a, an exchange. It does some other things. But what is Coinbase is really answered as in that centralized Coinbase Base.com mm -hmm. thing. Now there's base.org. Mm -hmm. And you you've talked a lot about 
you know, on-chain is the next online. Mm -hmm. What is the future of base? Is, is the future of Coinbase as a thing to say like, oh, what is Coinbase? Will that eventually be, oh, Coinbase is base.org. Mm. It is this base chain. Mm. Like what, how integral is it? Is this a side project or is this the full thing? Where are we on that spectrum? I, I definitely don't think it's a side project, but I think it's also not that Coinbase is base.org. You know, I think Coinbase is mission has been very clear for the last seven years since Brian wrote this like Coinbase secret master plan mm -hmm. where it is we're building the crypto economy and we think that's going to come in four phases first the protocols then the exchange that's Coinbase exchange then the consumer interfaces that's Coinbase wallet that's Coinbase dApp wallet that's Coinbase and then we're going to have millions of applications that enable billions of users to use crypto and we think about bases phase 3.5 it's like the platform that enables those millions of applications to bring in the billions of people and we think that that's incredibly complementary to all of the Coinbase products because it's going to mean more really useful things for users to actually do and internally at Coinbase, and this this kind of gets lost on the broader world. But internally, we've been thinking about our consumer products as the gateway to Web three for the last two and a half years, three years. That's like been the drumbeat that we've all been running to. It's like, we are building the gateway to Web3. And I think we're starting to see that come through. Like if you look at Coinbase Wallet, a year and a half ago, it was almost unusable. Right. And today it's like far and away the most usable crypto wallet in the world. And that is reflective of us saying, this is the gateway to Web3. We're not just an exchange. We are, want people to use crypto. What was pretty exciting for me to see after the base announcement uh, was all of the applications that seemed ready to go. Yeah. Uh, so some announced like, hey, we're building on base, not like hours after the base yep. announcement, some the next day, some a couple days later, yep. and we're still seeing them now. What, what's that pipeline been like? Like were, were some applications uh, made privy to base ahead of time? Some applications have already made their announcements post. Like talk about that process. Yeah. So when we got to the point where we had line of sight on a testnet launch, we went out and and talked with a number of different folks in the broader ecosystem. And one of our values for base has been base for everyone. Like that's been this drumbeat that we've, we've hit on internally for our team. And what that's meant is in every sector, you know, DeFi lending, uh, DeFi social gaming, um, and then even in the subsectors like trading, lending, borrowing, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, we didn't want to go to just one person and say this is an exclusive. And so we did is we went and talked to a few people and across each of those uh, sectors, we had, I think, three people at a minimum who were announcing on day one that they were building on base. And so that was this incredible group of, I think, like 70 different teams building on base announced on day one. Since we actually went public and we, we told the world about this, I mean, we've had so much demand. Yeah. Like, you guys just walk through the basement. Yeah. It's packed. We're putting people's photos up on the wall whenever they commit to building on base. And that's all indicative of this value, which is basis for everyone. Like, it's not just an exclusive, you know, cadre of people who are, you know, have special access to Coinbase or special access to some part of the team. It's like, we're going to invest in making it so everyone everywhere in the world can build on base, because that's what's going to be required to bring a million builders on chain and then a billion users on chain. And then I actually have a, the the Bankless family is going to love this. Uh, I'm already I, excited. The, the phrase is um, a million builders so we can have a billion bankless. Oh, can we put that into official, official base terminology? Say it again for the people in the back. <laughs> a million builders so we can have one billion bankless. So, uh, a lot of, something that we've noticed in across the various ecosystems, the layer two ecosystems, is like Polygon has an insane BT, BD team. Like they're always like known for that. Uh, building on on Starkware and Starknet has like their BD teams are very very strong. Uh, is there like a similar effort for a base chain? Is there like Coinbase putting BD behind this, or like what's the how does this world work? Yeah, I mean we got to walk out there and introduce you to our BD team. Mm -hmm. I, I mean I've been so blown away at the work that Polygon and 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 um, uh, others have done in bringing people into the crypto economy and I think our thesis is like there's so much growth ahead of us we are literally at day zero there are like a few million people in crypto we need to get to billions of people in crypto there are a few hundred businesses in crypto we need to get to millions of businesses in crypto and so I'm so grateful for all of the people who have been running incredible BD efforts to bring people into crypto I think I'm excited that Coinbase is about to join the fray you know we have an incredible BD team we have an incredible sales team we have this entire ecosystem of users of institutions of 
of developers who know and trust and have relationships with Coinbase already. And we're going to activate those people to come on chain. Because our thesis, if we can bring the 110 million users, the $80 billion of assets, Coinbase, like that's the starting point. But then because of our brand, because of the trust that we have, because of the, the track record we have of making crypto easy and secure, we're going to be able to bring in billions of people. And that's Every day I wake up, one million builders, one billion bank less. That's it. You say that in the mirror every in, single morning. In the, every single morning. Oh my, my god. My, my, my team, they're like Jesse. You, you, I, I'm like one million builders in 2023, one million bank less in 2024. They're like too crazy, Jesse. And you know, I'm <laughs> not, not crazy <laughs> enough. Not crazy enough. I mean, this is something that we've been saying at Bankless from the get go. It's like we want one billion people to go bankless, and the way that we do that is with technology that scales. Yes, yes, yes. And it, 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 you know, we haven't been ready for it for the last while, but really just in the last few, few days, I mean, not few days, few years, yeah. we've crossed, we've crossed over the infrastructures there. Layer twos are getting cheap enough. Wallets are getting good enough. We are at the inflection point uh -huh. where on chain is going to become the next online. Yeah. We are going to have a million builders yeah. and then we will have a billion bank lists in quick succession. Okay. Here's the line that I've got for you. Yes. Okay. Base makes Coinbase bankless. Base makes Coinbase bankless. Base makes Coinbase better. Base makes Coinbase an uh, on-chain native company. I mean, this is why we're here. We're so fired up. And one, I want to tie the bow on the BD conversation because I, I think what I really want listeners to be impressed with is that it's one thing when something like Arbitrum or Polygon or Optimism does their BD effort for some non-crypto thing. Yeah. Who are these people? A lot of outside of people, outside, they don't know who these teams yeah. are, but Coinbase does have that brand. And so Coinbase BD effort hits different. Mm -hmm. And so this is really about growing the pie to do BD for the whole entire industry, yeah. leveraging the legitimacy of Coinbase. Yeah, I don't think people are ready for the work we're gonna do to bring people on chain. Mm -hmm. This is our mission. We're gonna bring a billion people on chain so that they can transact and live in the crypto economy and so they can have increased economic freedom mm -hmm. that just makes their lives better and makes the world a better place. It's pretty uh, crazy and immaculate to see, Jesse, that uh, I was like, I found somebody said like, oh yeah, there's the base booth. I'm like, where's the base booth? And like, well, then, that's when I learned, oh, it's in the basement. <laughs> I'm like, so, okay, first off, that's great. Uh, but then I come down here and it's an entire floor. Yeah. And so base is only just like a few weeks old in announcement, not even like a week and a half or so. And already like there's, a, there's talks about building on base. There are people what looks like an Apple studio, like learning about how to build on base and it's all already full. Yeah. So like the excitement out of the gate, I've never seen before in crypto. So yeah. congratulations for it's all incredible. the work that you've done. We're so lucky to have such a great team building on base, uh, building base. And then we're such, so great to have so many incredible people building on base. So I'm, I'm, it's been one week exactly. Today's the one, one week anniversary. One wow. And I am just so grateful to get to be a part of this and get yeah. to be a part of making crypto, you know, happen. It's, a, it's a really, really just humbling to see all, all the great work that you guys have been doing. And so thank you for helping scale the world and helping the world go bankless. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Jesse, appreciate it. Damn. A million builders so we can have a billion bankless. Come on down, brother.